Whoa, the stakes are high here. Um, after big talk, after your talk, wow. I have to admit, I've been a keynote speaker before and always talking about my work, and I'm really good at that. But when I was invited to come here, I decided to talk about something deeply personal, and suddenly I realize I'm outside my comfort zone, and I'm nervous, I have to admit, so please bear with me. Let me start with three significant events that occurred in my life. First, I was born the youngest of six siblings, six girls. You heard right, no brothers. Second, I founded my first company in 1989, and in the same year, I took over the CEO position of my family company. I did those two things parallel for 11 years. And third, about 12 years ago, I suffered a massive breakdown. So massive that I couldn't work for the better of a year, even though I needed to take care of my then 10-year-old son and myself as a single mother. So why am I telling you about this? Because these events all have something in common. They're about love, and they are about power. And they're about how those two are connected or not. And it was a long journey to understand that these events had a deep mutual meaning and that they did something for me. This is why I'm here today, to talk to you about love and about power and how the two, when they are looked at differently, and how we can we, when we understand them differently, how a completely new way for uh, humanity becomes visible. It was the third event, my breakdown, that set me on a journey of exploring and eventually understanding the meaning and the gift of those three events. When, in that state of total breakdown, at first, nothing, absolutely nothing makes sense. I kept asking myself, what is happening? Why is this happening? Why is it happening to me? Why doesn't it just go away? For weeks, it was an almost undoable effort to get out of bed. I couldn't read. I couldn't listen to music. Barely have a conversation. Or let alone go out of the house to go somewhere else. All I could do was lie in bed, mostly cry, sometimes sleep. I didn't know how I could bear it, and then again, I didn't have a choice, did I? You need to understand that up until then, I was a strong, independent woman, and uh, so I, it, I was sort of full of personal power to move things forward. And I was proud to believe everything goes. And when something got in my way, or beware, someone got in my way, I set my mind, moved the obstacle out of the way. Who wasn't with me was against me. That's what I had learned. That what had worked, apparently, in my life up until then. But being forced to what felt like nothingness, a helplessness, a powerlessness of such incredible dimensions I never thought would exist, at least not for me, that scared me to the core. I was completely lost, and I had no idea how to deal with it. I didn't have the tools to cope with me, this powerless person, now facing a situation where suddenly nothing goes. I was lucky enough to have a doctor who made me understand that the only way I would really be able to come out of this in a good way was to explore the real root cause of what actually brought me there in the first place. Some years before my breakdown, I'd shifted my work and I had become an international business consultant and coach. I had learned things about um, um, practicing presence and mindfulness, now, in the state that I was in, 
After a short while, I could slowly connect back with these practices, and I realized it felt different. It started to feel more real. I also began to re-research and re-read some of the stuff I'd learned before, for example, around systems theory, where you learn how all parts of a system are connected in a hugely complex way, and there is no way to control it. I also started to relearn about constructivism, where you learn there is no objective reality out there. We all create our own reality as we go through life. Slowly, I could begin to enjoy my learning journey. My curiosity came back. So it seemed that I was getting better. But I just couldn't get rid of that feeling that something was missing. Every time I thought I understood something, how things are interrelated and connected, I was still left with that sense of emptiness. Somehow, it just wasn't enough. It lacked meaning. Eventually, I knew I would have to go back to work. But every time I thought about that, I went back to crying, and my body went into this sense of helplessness and powerlessness. Clearly, my body was telling me, this was not the way to go, not for me. But what then? This is when I realized that I needed to ask myself different questions. I needed to ask myself, what is it that I really want to do what is it that would make me happy and feel meaningful at the same time? When asking myself these questions, I could feel my heartbeat go up, a sense of joy and excitement in my gut. And one night, I woke up as though a bolt of lightning would have hit me. I got up and I heard this question, what is my purpose? You see, today, I'm really thankful you hear a lot about purpose, organizational purpose, personal purpose, not 10 years ago. Within this new, with this new question guiding me, it became clear what had been missing on my learning journey. I'd been way too much in my head, thinking I could cognitively explore and understand, intellectually understand what was going on in my life. But what was missing was the real meaning, the real search for the big why, my big why. So that made new things pop up. Shortly after that, I ran into something called holacracy. Um, it's a completely new way of working together. It enables organizations to fully distribute power in service of purpose. Hmm. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but it felt right. I knew it, this is for me. So I started to practice, and whoa, the learning journey. What it taught me is a completely new way of understanding and expressing power. Expressing power in a distributed way. A way to be truly powerful together. Next, I attended a training called The Art of Hosting. In one of the exercises, I was invited to bring in a question, a personal question, into a dialogue. So my question was, how can I move forward professionally? Monica, one of the inventors and developers of The Art of Hosting, listened to the conversation for a while, and then she said, you know, your question seems to be, how can love manifest in the corporate world? I was like, oh my God, yes, this is it. I was so stunned. Yeah, exactly. But my answer that I gave her expressed the limiting belief I'd had all along. I said, but I can't talk about love in the business world. She looked at me, she said, why not? Something shifted. Suddenly, everything was clear. Something inside of me just went flip. 
because of those two words. And I will forever be thankful to Monica for this moment. Now I finally understood my purpose in the world is about love and about power and how to bring the two together. With the richness of all these new experiences, I now needed to go back into reflection mode. I was aware I still hadn't figured out why I had gone through this massive breakdown in the first place. Uh, and, um, yeah, I needed to do that in order to make, be able to make a really fresh start. But with the new clarity about my purpose being the unification of love and power, I learned to understand that my breakdown was the result of me living a life that was completely detached from my purpose. It was not carried by love, neither for myself nor for life as such, and also not moved by my authentic power. I had led a life where I had thought I knew what was right for me, but it had cost me my entire strength. My body, a truly wise ally, had told me, enough. Time for you to find out who you really are. The homework I'd done was to revisit all major events of my life that had caused me pain, and to imagine how these situations could shift when love and power had been unified, not separated. So, for example, the situations that I started my talk out with today. Born the youngest of six girls. I can't tell you how many times when saying this to someone, I heard as an answer, a poor father. Or, even better, the wish for the son is the father of many daughters. What powerful words to say to a child. People who say these things have no idea of the power they have in this moment and how love is so completely missing in that. I've re-envisioned many versions of those situations where people would say these things to me. I can see alternative situations where love and power aren't separate. What would someone say who was conscious about the power of the moment and simultaneously connected to their love. Here are some examples. Are all your sisters as lively as you? Or, many children, much love. Or, boy, your parents must be so proud. I'm sure you can think of many other versions of things to say that in that moment could be received very differently by a child. And the second situation. Running my own company and in parallel holding the CEO situation of uh, our family company required a lot of strength and inner and outer power for me. It also caused me a lot of pain with parts of my family. I was accused of all sorts of mo motives and of bad intentions and of doing this only to shift things in my favor. Business and family, unfortunately, rarely go to re together really well. Business being a field for power, family being in general, hopefully, a field for love. What would some of my family members feel and how would they behave if they were conscious about how things could evolve when we were first conscious about loving each other and then could trust into each of our authentic power? Looking back, I can see how sad it is that power causes so much fear and so much hurtful things because of how our society is used to express power. We naturally believe that power held by a person means holding power over another person. So we naturally strive to increase our power. That leads to competitiveness, to separation, and often hatred, and it creates fear that the person who is holding power will use it for their own gain and to 
to the limit of others. Imagine a different perspective of the story above. Imagine everybody involved is invited into his or her own authentic power and to approach, uh, to approach each other in love. So, everybody else, that means that we all have the capacity to show ourselves to each other truly as who we are. Fear can go away. Power can shift from power over to power with. Immediately, that enables us to connect to love and engage together for the things that we love in a very powerful way. Through reliving many of those difficult situations of my life and seeing the potential how things could shift, I finally understood why my breakdown was such a great gift. I saw that it was up to me to approach my life, and with this new consciousness and my personal purpose, I knew whatever I want to do in the future, whatever my work in the world would be, it would have to be about my expressing my purpose. It would have to be about the unity of love and power. There are endless examples of how the unity of love would power, uh, the unity of love and power would shift the story of humanity. Just imagine, global warming would not be used as a field for power play, but tackled with love for the earth and humanity, and by being powerful together to resolve it. Imagine the gap between rich and poor would be tackled with love and with power with. So, there were, in the 60s, we had um, the hippies called out. Can you, a few of you might remember that still. Imagine there were a war and nobody goes. They were laughed at. I don't think that was laughable. They already saw what was lacking, and what we're experiencing today. Imagine the fact that millions of people die from hunger while others throw food away because we produce way more food than we possibly can eat. Just imagine this could be tackled by inviting everybody who cares about this to step into their authentic power and move this world towards being a more loving place. Let me bring it all down to a point. What is power? Power is the capacity to act and to influence and direct the course of events. Power without love can influence the course of events without care and concern for the consequences to the greater whole. What is love? When I speak of love, I mean the great force that gives everything reason, that connects everything, and that lets us feel how we are all part of a greater whole, and that we all are here for a reason. That we each have our own path to go, individually and collectively, which contributes to this greater whole. When we are connected to this love, and we're connected to our own authentic power, and the power of others who care for the same things. Imagine the capacity we have to move things forward in the interest of the greater whole. I invite all of you to reach out and connect to your love, reach out to power, and lead your life through the unity of the two. Because when love and power are inseparable, humanity will unite. Thank you. <laughs>